Welcome back to part four of the interview. I'm Craig Conway and I'm here with Jeremy Griffith, the biologist who has just explained how humans acquired our moral instincts. This is an absolutely remarkable interview. So continuing on, Jeremy, uh, what about my third question for this final part four of the interview, which is, um, how does the psychological rehabilitation of the human race that this understanding gives us actually take place. Now, do we all need to go into therapy or something? Well, what this real and actually very obvious instinct versus intellect explanation of the human condition fundamentally does is lift the burden of guilt from the human race. It establishes that we humans are good and not bad after all. Uh, while we're all uh, inevitably variously angry, egocentric and alienated from our, our different encounters with humanity's heroic battle to find knowledge, ultimately self-knowledge, understanding of our corrupted condition, we can now know that every human is fundamentally good. And this ability to understand and know there was a good reason why the human race became psychologically upset is the key relieving understanding we have been in search of ever since we became conscious some two million years ago and our corrupted condition emerged. I mean, that, that is the key relief for our mind. Being finally able to understand that we are good and not bad is what bring up, brings us the greatest psychological relief of all. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, the psychoanalyst Carl Jung uh, was forever saying wholeness for humans depends on the ability to own our own shadow. And, and since we can now own the shadow of our species' two million years corrupted condition, the human race is finally in a position to become whole. I mean, the word psychosis literally means soul illness and psychiatry literally means soul healing derived as they are from psyche, meaning soul, and osis, um, meaning abnormal state, and iatreia, which, which uh, means healing. Mm. But we've never been able to heal our soul, explain to our original instinctive self or soul that we, the, uh, us fully conscious thinking uh, humans, are good and not bad, and by so doing, reconcile and heal our split selves. But now at last we can. Well, there is an adage that says, the truth will set you free. So what you're saying then, Jeremy, is that the truth of our fundamental goodness is the truth that we needed to set us free from the human condition. Precisely. And while that is the main relief our mind needed, obviously, the, the more we digest that relieving understanding, the more healing relief come, comes to every aspect of our upset condition. And to have had to endure being unjustly condemned as bad for two million years does mean that there's a great deal of upset to heal. I mean, to appreciate how much upset exists in us humans now, imagine living for just one day with the injustice of being condemned as bad, even evil, when you intuitively knew but were unable to explain that you were actually the complete opposite of evil namely truly wonderful, good and meaningful. In fact, uh, not just good, but the hero of the story of life on earth. Y you would be hurt to the core and furious, wouldn't you? Mm. Now, extrapolate that experience over two million years and we can begin to appreciate just how much volcanic frustration and anger must now exist within us humans. I mean... While we have learned to significantly restrain and conceal, I mean, we call it civilise, um, the phenomenal amount of upset within us, under the surface, we are all, we must all be boiling with rage. And sometimes, um, uh, when our restraint can no longer find a way to contain it, that anger must express itself. Hence, our, our capacity for shocking acts of cruelty and sadism, hate, murder and war. Yeah. And no wonder we have led such an evasive, denial-practicing, lying, um, avoiding any criticism, escapist, alienated, superficial and artificial, greedy, egocentric, power, fame, fortune and glory-seeking existence. We've had to smother ourselves with material glory while we lack the spiritual glory of compassionate understanding of ourselves. So, so there's, there's an enormous amount of upset to subside and heal in us humans. And that will obviously take time. In fact, um, 
we, we have to expect that that will take a number of generations to completely be ameliorated. Um, but, but the good news, and this is very important, is that while it'll take a number of generations to heal all the upset in us humans, everyone can immediately live free of their upset. Now, the reason we can live free of it is that while we lack the, the real defence and reinforcement of understanding uh, of our corrupted condition, we absolutely need it, the artificial defences and reinforcements of attacking any criticism of our corrupted condition, of denying and blocking it out and of finding any positive reinforcement we could. Uh, our anger, ego, alienation, egocentricity uh, are what sustained us. But now that we have the real defence and reinforcement of our fundamental goodness, all, that artific all those artificial defences and reinforcements are obsolete. They're no longer needed. In fact, to continue using the old artificial defences of, of retaliation and denial and, and the search for relieving power, fame, fortune and glory, when our fundamental goodness has been established, is not only clearly pointless, but also, also unnecessarily destructive of ourselves and everyone around us and of our, our, and of our planet. That way of living is now completely obsolete and finished with. That makes total sense. I mean, our, our artificial ways of reinforcing ourselves are obsoleted by the real reinforcement of ourselves. Uh, one way of living ends, a new one begins, free from the human condition. Whew, thank God for that. That's for sure. Basically, now that our corrupted condition is finally truthfully explained, honesty replaces denial and the world heals. I mean, bullshit, which is our everyday word, for all the dishonest denial that's been going on, protected us uh, from all the truths about a corrupt condition that we couldn't properly explain. But it was destroying the world, and it now stops. Yeah. And uh, uh, with this end of lying in mind, there's one more thing I should explain, which is that um, socialism, the New Age movement, and the politically correct movement, and all the other idealistic movements were actually all false starts to a human condition free will because the upsetting battle to find knowledge, ultimately self-knowledge, the psychologically relieving understanding of why we're good and not bad still had to be completed. In, in fact, while dogmatically insisting that everyone should be cooperative and loving could make you feel that, that, that you were doing good and be superficially, psychologically very relieving, such insistence on ideal behaviour denied people the freedom they needed to be able to continue the all-important upsetting search for knowledge. I mean, these movements were pseudo-idealistic movements that, that stifled and oppressed the search for the understanding of our corrupted condition that was actually needed to, to free us from that state. They were regressive, not progressive, as they deluded themselves they were. It was actually the right wing who have supported the upsetting battle to find knowledge that held the moral high ground, not the pseudo-idealistic left wing. Hmm. The culture of the left made people superficially feel good, but it was dangerously dishonest. It was face, fake. It, it, it was bullshit. Being concerned for others and the world is very important, but doing that to make yourself feel good is a dangerously selfish sickness. Indeed, uh, it's the most destructive of all drug addictions, and it's been taking over the world. As I explain in my free book, Death by Dogma, Dogma is not the cure, it's the poison. Yeah. Um, so you, you can see here that the true instinct versus intellect explanation of the human condition finally enables us to explain and expose what's wrong with the left. And it's not a moment too soon because the culture, its culture is rapidly taking our species to death by dogma extinction. Yeah. Now, most wonderfully of all, the, the instinct versus intellect explanation of the human condition not only exposes the culture of the left for the, for the human race destroying lie that it is, it also, as I said, brings to an end the whole upsetting search for the rehabilitating understanding of why we're good and not bad. And what this means is that it's no longer oppressive of that upsetting search to take up support of cooperative and loving idealism because that search is over. In fact, taking up support of cooperative and loving idealism is now the only way of living that's justified. 
I mean, suddenly there's no longer any reason for the right wing in politics and everyone effectively becomes left wing. In, in fact, the whole business of politics basically ends with the finding of understanding of the human condition. And the, and the whole human race sets out as one united organism, letting go the angry, egocentric and alienated part of ourselves and supporting cooperative and loving idealism. And I might say that uh, much more is explained about pseudo-idealism in video 14 on the World Transformation Movement's website. Yeah, I mean, ending the polarised world of politics will certainly be one of the biggest reliefs imaginable. Absolutely, Craig. It, it'll be a massive relief. So, so that's how the whole world suddenly, immediately changes from a psychologically embattled, angry, egocentric and alienated state to a world where everyone has decided to abandon their still to be healed, competitive and aggressive behaviour and takes up support of a cooperative and loving existence. So finding understanding of, of the human condition brings to an end the insecure, um, upset, artificial, reinforcement dependent, angry, egocentric and alienated world. A, a new human condition resolved, cooperative, selfless and loving world now emerges. Light uh, comes streaming into the dark cave-like world of denial that we've been living in and it will uh, all be like waking up from a nightmare. And basically, um, we, with the ability to understand ourselves, we can return to our original cooperative and loving state, but this time fully conscious. As uh, the poet T.S. Eliot anticipated, we shall not cease from exploration and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. Wow, Jeremy, that has been absolutely incredible, enlightening, enthralling, um, and I really can't thank you enough for sharing with us um, uh, your knowledge and uh, your insight uh, to think about the human race being transformed just in the nick of time is, is I think what everybody out there who has listened to this will be hoping for. And uh, your book, Freedom, uh, again, will be available on humancondition.com um, for everybody to access and to get. And it's, it's free on there as well. So please follow this interview up. Listen to this interview again and again. Um, try your best to understand what Jeremy is saying here. But get online, get the information and keep studying. And let's hope we can all enjoy and embrace a new change for the world, for all of us. Jeremy, it's been wonderful to talk to you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we will hopefully speak to you again, but better so we'll be seeing your work um, in the lives of everybody uh, across the planet and across the globe very soon. Uh, I've been Craig Conway. This has been the interview with Jeremy Griffith.